Number one asks us to take each quadratic expression and match it to its factored form. So this first one, we see that both terms have an x in them, so we'll be able to factor that out. So when we do x squared divided by x, we get x, and 6x divided by x gives us 6. So we can just distribute that um, x out, and we end up with number 5. So a goes with number 5. Um, then we get into trinomials, so ter um, quadratics with three terms. So we can take this final number here and see what numbers multiply to 5 and add to 6. Um, and so the numbers that add to 5, or sorry, multiply to 5 and add to 6 are 5 and 1. So in this middle term, you'd get 5 times x, which is 5x, and then you'd get 1 times x, which is 1x. 5x and 1x adds to that 6x, and then 5 times 1 gives you the 5 at the end. Um, so this one is number 2. Next one, your final term is negative 7. So now they need to multiply to negative 7. So one is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. And then they need to add to positive 6. So we know that we're going to have a 7 and a 1 since that's the only numbers that multiply to 7. And then we want the 6 to be positive. So we're going to need a positive 7 with a negative 1 because that's going to give us positive 7x and negative 1x for the 6x in the middle. And then positive 7 times negative 1 gives us that negative 7. So that's number 1. Next one, our final term is um, 8. So now we want the factors that multiply to 8 and add to 6. So 8's not a prime number, so we're going to have some options here. So you can write out the factors of 8. So 1 and 8 or 2 and 4. So which of those adds to 6 is the 2 and the 4. So we'd have to have a positive 2 and a positive 4 so that it multiplies to positive 8 and adds to that positive 6. And so then that's going to be number 3, even though I have it written backwards. Doesn't matter since it's multiplication. So you can either have x plus 4 first or you could have x plus 2 first. And then that leaves number 4 left over for e. Numbers that multiply to 9 and add to 6 are 3 and 3. Number two, an equation of a circle is written like this. What is the radius of the circle and what is the center? Um, so we've got two different parts here. We've got this X part and then we've got the um, Y part, which are perfect square trinomials, okay? Meaning that they will factor to the same number just like this, where these were both X plus three. So we could write it as this, x plus 3 squared. So right here, the numbers that multiply to 16 that add to negative 8, okay, that's x minus 4 squared because negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16 and negative 4 plus negative 4 is that negative 8. Um, and then the y part gives us um, y plus 4. 5. So the 5 times 5 gives us 25, and 5 plus 5 gives us the 10 in the middle. So y plus 5 squared. And then that's equal to the 81 still. And remember, 81 is our radius squared. So what number squared gives us 81 is 9. So our center here is going to be the number we subtract from our x. So that's going to be 4. And then the number we subtracted from y. So we subtracted a negative 5 from y. So our center is 4, negative 5. And then our radius is 9. Number 3, write three perfect square trinomials. Then rewrite them as squared binomials. So we're just making up our own here. So you can make up whatever you want. You do need the last term to be a perfect square. So when we're thinking about perfect squares, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So these numbers, these perfect square numbers, you're going to need at the end. 
So you need to use a perfect square number. Now these are just the first few. Okay, you can certainly use other ones as well. So if you were gonna do something like that, so if we were gonna use um, 16 as our final number, so we'd have x squared, at the end we'd have 16, Okay, and 16 is four times four. So this middle term we would wanna have as eight X. So four plus four, or we could have it as negative eight X because negative four times negative four is 16 and negative four plus negative four is negative eight. So then as a perfect square binomial, this one would be X plus four squared. This one would be X minus four squared. So you want to make sure that this end number is your um, number squared and that this middle number is that number times two. So then another one we could do um, if we wanted to pick like let's do the middle, let's do the end number as nine squared, so 81. So then we could have um, 81 at the end. So then this middle number would need to be nine plus nine or 18. And it could be negative 18 as well. So this is four different perfect square trinomials for you. So this one would be X plus nine, since nine times nine is 81 and nine plus nine is 18. Or this one would be X minus nine squared so that we get that negative 18 x in the middle. Number four, write the equation of a circle that has a diameter with these two endpoints. Okay, so um, the diameter, right, goes across the circle. And so we're, we need the center. So this one is at negative 18, 3. And this one is at 12, 3. And we notice, hopefully, that um, these y values are both the same. So it's at the same height. So I know that the y coordinate here will be a 3, okay, because it's going to stay the same. We're looking for the middle number. So now we just have to find the middle of negative 18 and um, 12. And so you find the middle by doing the average. So negative 18 plus 12 and then dividing it by 2. So negative 18 plus 12 is negative six divided by two gives you negative three. And then I like to just check. So negative 18 to negative three is 15 away. So plus 15. And then 12 to negative three is also plus 15, just to make sure that it's in the center. So this is your center of your circle. And then we need the radius, which is actually that 15 that we just talked about, because that's how far the center is to the edge, um, would give us 15 units. So now you just want to plug this into your circle equation, which is x minus the x coordinate of the center squared plus y minus the y coordinate of the center squared equals your radius squared. So your center point, okay, your x coordinate of your center is negative three. So we'll plug in negative three here. And then your y coordinate of your center is three. And then our radius is 15. So that would be your circle equation. Um, you can certainly multiply out the radius if you want. So it's gonna be x plus three squared plus y minus three squared and then 15 squared is 225. So you can write it as either of those. Number five, graph this circle. Um, and then we're gonna do some stuff with it. So first we need the center, okay? So the center here is gonna be two, one, okay? So we subtracted two and we subtracted one from the X and the Y. So the center point is at the point two, one. So here's our center. Then our radius, so this is our radius squared is 25, so our radius is five. So we're gonna wanna count out five from each of these, okay? So um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and that's gonna go off. This one's gonna go off. One, two, three, four, five. So you could have changed this and counted by twos if you wanted. Um, 
I'm not going to because I can just use this circle tool to get my circle drawn here. So just go out to a radius of five. Um, now you might have wanted to change it to two so you can try and look and see if these points are on it. However, I'm actually going to plug each of these points into my equation to prove whether or not they're on the circle. So this um, point four zero, and you could look one, two, three, four. It's clearly not, okay, because it's on the inside of the circle. And um, so we know that that one's not, but we can also plug it in here. The X is four, so four minus two squared. So I'm just plugging it in. And then the Y coordinate is zero, so zero minus one squared. And that should equal 25 if it's on our circle. Well, four minus two is two squared, and then this is negative one squared. Two squared is four, plus negative one squared is one. That does not equal 25, that only equals five. Okay, so this is bad. Okay, so that one is not on the circle. Um, then, let me see, I'm just gonna move this up here. Okay, so then we can plug in um, these ones into the circle equation as well. And so this one, we've got negative three minus two. So negative three minus two is negative five squared. And then we'll do three minus one. Okay, so we're plugging this into the Y coordinate. So three minus one is two squared. So then 25 plus four, because this is 25 when we square it, plus four does not equal 25. So this one is not on the circle either. And you can see that here at negative three, three would be inside of our circle as well. Oops, that's not negative three, three, that's three, three. Okay, so negative three, one, two, three, negative three, three is outside of our circle. Um, and then you can plug in this last one. So then negative two minus two is negative four squared. And then negative two minus one is negative three squared. Negative four squared is 16. Negative three squared is nine. 16 plus nine is 25. So this one is on our circle. And you can go to the point negative two, two and see that it looks like it crosses there as well. So how can you use distance calculations to decide if a point is inside, on, or outside of the circle? So if your distance is equal to the radius, then it's gonna be on the circle. If your distance is greater than the radius, then it's gonna be outside the circle. So like this one where the distance was 29, that's outside of the circle. Or if your distance is less than the radius, okay, then the point is gonna be inside the circle. And we saw that with this one where the distance was five, well really square root of five, um, but that's less than the radius, so that one's going to be inside the circle. Number six, the triangle whose vertices are 2, 5, 3, 1, and 4, 2 is transformed by this rule. Is the image similar or congruent to the original figure? So remember when we add and subtract, that's just taking the triangle. Okay, so if this was our random triangle. That's just taking this exact same triangle and just moving it to the left two and up four. So it doesn't change the size, it's just translating it, okay, around your graph. So the image is gonna be congruent to the original triangle. Number seven, a triangular prism has a height of six units. The base of the prism is shown. What is the volume? So remember, volume is area of the base times the height. And they give us our height here. Remember, a triangular prism is just going to be like this, where your bases are triangles. And it's just three-dimensional. So this is what we're doing. This base right here is this triangle. So we have the height is six. Now we just need to calculate the area of this base. So to do the area of a triangle, you need to do the base times the height divided by two. 
So we have the height of this triangle. We just need this base length. And so we're going to have to use trig for that. So we've got the angle. Four is the opposite side. The side we're looking for is the adjacent. So that's going to be a tangent function. So we're going to do tangent of 25 equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. So then we'll multiply both sides by x. And then we'll divide by tangent of 25 to both sides. And then that's what we'll type into our calculator is 4 divided by um, the tangent of 25. And that gives us um, 8.5. Five, eight for that length, whoops, 8.58. So then when we go to calculate the um, area of that base, we'll be doing four times 8.58 and dividing that by two. And we'll get a base area of 17.16. And then we have this height here of six when we go to actually calculate the volume. So our volume is going to be area of the base times the height. And our base area is 17.16. And our height is six of that triangular prism. So then the volume here is going to be 102.96. Um, and then units cubed. And this says to the nearest tenth, so really this six would round up, so this would be 103 units cubed.